What is up you guys, this is JP coming at you with another video. First things first, for all things fitness related, in-person training, uh, I'm training at a self-made training facility in Redlands, California, for training programs which should be ready the beginning of summer 2020, so in about three or four months. For signing up for my newsletter, all that good stuff, head to jpfitnesspro.com. You can contact me there, the link's in the description. Again, it's jpfitnesspro.com. All right, today's video is going to be me helping you guys all the people that are coming into the new year with fitness goals there are a lot of people who come to the end of the year they're like you know when the new year starts i'm going to you know hit it hard i'm gonna go to the gym i have fitness goals and personally i don't really think this is the best mindset uh because again there's nothing too special about the new year you know a lot of people put emphasis on the new year just because you know that's a lot of people you know that's our culture for most people um and it feels like something new you know it's a new number but when the new year hits it People don't realize it doesn't feel that much different. But again, I'm not here to kind of harp on that. Um, even though I don't think it's the best mindset, it's more of a way to put it off for people. I'm gonna give you guys some tips in regards to training and diet that are going to help you guys be successful in uh, 2020. All right, my first tip is going to be involved with training. And I'm gonna go a tiny bit in depth on this. I'm gonna try to not, to not make it too long. Is, And this is very important, because this is the only tip I'm gonna give on training is, uh, Please, 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 please stick with something that is adherable. You do not want to bite off more than you can chew. It doesn't matter if it is the most optimal program. If it is something that you cannot stick to, you are not going to obviously stick to it. Now, you need to think about that because sometimes you may think initially, oh, I can stick to this. You may feel motivated. You may feel like you want to get it, but you need to realize that for every single individual, even a Navy SEAL, our toughness and discipline is finite. While Navy SEALs and you know military, you know, uh, you know people in special forces have the highest amounts of discipline, you know, eventually, you know, they, for example, a Navy SEAL can't do their hell week a hundred times over. Obviously, they'd be dead um, because that'd be a hundred weeks of no sleep, pretty much. They'd be dead, but they have the highest amounts of discipline. Now, if you keep going down that chain, you're most people are gonna fall, you know, they're gonna have a certain level of tough, toughness and discipline. But regardless, it's going to be a finite source. You cannot fully rely on toughness and discipline. You need to balance the toughness and discipline with a program that's adherable, something you can stick to. Um, think about it. If you have a program, again, that's too tough, there's gonna be a day where you're just, you cannot dig into that toughness, you cannot dig into that motivation, and you're gonna crack, you're not gonna wanna work out that day. If the program is too easy, you're not gonna see the best results and it's not gonna be as rewarding from doing it. You need to find something for you that's doable, something that you can stick to that's challenging enough so that when you do have your off days, you're like, well, I need to dig deep, I need to be tough, I need to have some discipline, but that's not so tough that you feel like you're constantly having to push, 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 push. Um, so you need to find a program that's that's you know uh, adherable. Um, now, since this is my only point, I'm gonna kind of give you some sub points to help find a program for you that's you know something that's adherable. So my first kind of sub point for this is that a good program that's adherable. For remember, this is for people who have had trouble working out uh, before, who have trouble kind of. I'm assuming that if you're starting in 2020, it's because you tried this before, or or it's, working out's not part of your life. So. You might be the rare person who could not follow these rules and still be successful, but um, that's I'm talking to the people who have struggled before. So my first sub point is stick to a workout frequency of two to three times per week. You do not need to work out more than that, okay? Two to three workouts per week is good as long as your nutrition is obviously on point, which I'm gonna talk about in a little bit. Um, so if your goal is weight loss and your nutrition's on point, two to three times per week frequency for a whole workout is good. That's perfectly fine. Even if your goal is to gain weight, two to three times per week workout frequency is more than enough. You, even if your goal is lifting, if it's cardio, you do not need to work out more than two to three times per week. Now, of course, you can work out two, more than two to three times per week and see great results. Um, but it's all how you balance, you know, volume and intensity. But you need to, uh, for those of you who have struggled so far, just stick to working out two to three times per week. It's very doable, you're gonna see great results, and as long as your diet's on point, you should have no issue. This is, again, goes for lifting, cardio. That's something that's very doable for pretty much every single person. If you start out working out, trying to work out five to six times per week, if you've struggled before, that's not gonna be easy to keep up with. 
All right, my second tip for working out is you do not need to train to failure for lifting. And for cardio, you do not need to go to the point that you're puking. So if you think that you need to do this and you're doing this yourself, you don't have to do that. You don't need to come into the gym and squat until you feel like you're gonna puke. You don't need to gym, go to the gym and squat until you cannot get another single rep. You don't have to do that. The evidence is very strong in uh, not training to failure and maximizing gains. Um, now, I'm not saying that the sets should be the easiest thing in the world. They should be challenging for you, but you don't need to train a failure. You don't need to, again, work out till you throw up. So don't feel like you go to the gym and you, you need to go balls to the walls every single time because if you do that, or if someone told you that you do that, which they're wrong, they're wrong. I, if you want the evidence, I can show you. Um, that's going to decrease your adherence. Now again, it should be moderately challenging, but you don't want it to be so hard that you feel like you're dreading going to the gym every single day. Again, that's going to lower adherence. So don't feel like you need to do that. All right, my third point and my last sub point for this first tip is find someone to hold you accountable. Whether that's working with a trainer or whether that's working with a friend or whether that's just having a family member hold you accountable, maybe telling people around you. Again, doing that, it's going to hold you accountable. Again. It's just, you know, they say that, they have that phrase, you know, um, uh, misery loves company. So if you find, if you've struggled with the gym before and you have a friend that's gonna work out with you, it's much easier if you guys are holding each other accountable. Hey, come over here, let's work out. Um, let's do it together. You know, you guys are both doing it. It might be hard, but you have someone to do it with you. You know, if you're constantly around people who aren't working out or drinking, partying, eating whatever they want, you're gonna kind of be a product of your environment. So if you're around the gym, if you're around people who are working out, or if you're around people who are telling you, hey, you need to go to the gym, it's gonna be a lot easier. Again, you could work with a trainer, but you don't have to if you don't have the money for that. Um, so that's something I would definitely recommend. All right, now onto my nutrition tips. So this is probably gonna be the most challenging one for most of you because a most people who have weight management goal, it's weight loss. Now, I'm not gonna ignore you weight gainers out there because there definitely are people who struggle to gain weight, but for most people, it is weight loss. So my first tip for weight loss is kind of a, a one that I haven't really said before, is if you are dieting or you are in a caloric restriction, obviously, I'll start, this is a new point that I actually just thought of right now, which is real quick is, it's something that I've said before, is don't go crazy with your diet, you shouldn't be cutting too hard. If you're starving yourself, don't do it. If you're in a caloric deficit, you should just be in a slight caloric deficit. I'll start with that. So that was just kind of like a bonus point. All right, but my first actual tip for nutrition is you you can include diet breaks into your uh, diet or healthy eating. So if you're on a caloric restriction, calorically restricted diet, even if it's made out well, it's just a slight caloric restriction, every maybe four weeks let's just say you do three weeks in a row where you're eating healthy you're on a slight intelligent caloric restriction the fourth week you can go up to a maintenance and this actually won't have any negative effects on your diet except it's going to prolong it a little bit there's actually a study done on this where um you had two they had two groups uh one group didn't take any diet breaks and one group took i think it was two weeks on a caloric deficit two weeks on maintenance and uh the group that was doing the diet breaks actually lost 50 percent more fat even though the calorie deficits were matched between the the, the the deficit weeks but the only downside is that the uh the the diet break group took i think it was twice as long to do the, to, to lose that extra weight um, but again, that doesn't matter because you have the entire year, you know, uh, longevity and adherence is the name of the game. So don't feel like you have to go die, die, die every single week, you know, every four weeks, or you could even do every three weeks. You could even do every other week if you wanted to. Think about it. I, I mean, it's obviously going to slow your progress a lot, but if you were to go diet week, maintenance week, diet week, maintenance week all the way to the end of 2020. That means you went 26 weeks on a caloric restricted diet and then 26 weeks not. Now again, you should have lost plenty of weight by then. For some of you, you don't need to do that for that long. But for some of you who have a lot of weight to lose, that might be a good idea. Um, or again, you could just do three weeks on a diet, one week maintenance. One thing I will note with that is don't go nuts on your maintenance week. I'm saying maintenance. If you go, if you're taking what I'm saying and on your maintenance week, you're eating whatever you want going nuts, you can definitely ruin a diet by doing that. So if you just go to maintenance calories, that definitely can help you, uh, 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 you know, have success more in the long run. There's a lot of hormonal stuff that goes with the diet breaks too. When you go up to maintenance calories, it affects your hormones positively, but I'm not gonna get into that for this video. 
or my second nutrition tip for you guys is eat foods based on their satiety level, which is feeling of fullness. And this goes for people looking to gain weight and people looking to lose weight. This is probably one of the best tips I could ever give someone who is trying to manage their weight, but most people don't, they kind of look over it or they don't apply it. They just kind of skim over it. I'm telling you, if you master this tip, it will help you. So if you guys don't know what satiety is, it's just feeling a fullness. Our hunger mechanisms as humans, it's not accurate. It's not accurate at all. You could eat, you could eat certain foods, not feel full at all, but be in a caloric surplus. And then there's other foods where you could eat and you feel crazy full like you're gonna throw up, but you could actually be in a caloric deficit. So you can't go by feeling a fullness in regards to how many calories you're eating. What I'm saying is, but the feeling of fullness is a good tool to use to manipulate calories. It kind of sounds like I'm saying opposites. What I'm saying is, if you're only relying on feeling of fullness and you're not looking at calories, you may not feel full at all, but you may be eating so many calories. But if you're using certain foods that are very satiating per their calorie, you could be doing great. Let me give you an example. If you're someone trying to lose weight, a lot of people who are trying to lose weight, they like eating lots of food. They do, it's just, it is. I like eating lots of food. I used to be big. When I'm on a cut, I eat foods like watermelon because watermelon, for example, I always use watermelon. There's lots of satiating foods out there, but watermelon is just a quick one that I go to. Two pounds of watermelon is only 300 calories. Now, when I eat two pounds of watermelon, it's a pretty big plate. I feel really, 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 really full. I don't feel like eating for a while. That's 300 calories, plus watermelon's healthy for you. So I'm not saying eat five plates of watermelon a day, but having one big serving of watermelon in your day can actually make you feel really full and make you not want to eat, but it's not that many calories. It's really not. So if you include foods like this that are very satiating, which is watermelon, lots of veggies, other fruits, those types of things, drinking a lot of water throughout the day helps with filling a fullness. You're not going to want to eat all these other foods. Now, on the other end of the spectrum, if you're trying to gain weight, you wanna eat very low satiating foods. So these are foods that are don't make you feel full for how many calories they are. These types of foods are avocados, nuts, seeds, sauces, and every once in a while, not a lot, every once in a while, have a dessert, eat some fast food every once in a while. If you do that, you should definitely see that gaining weight's a lot easier. Now, on the other end of the spectrum, for someone trying to lose weight, you should avoid the low satiating foods. Now, including a little bit of these is fine because you need to get like healthy fats, for example. But if you're eating a lot of low satiating foods and you're trying to lose weight, you're going to be taking in a lot of calories and you're not going to be feeling that full. If you're trying to gain weight and you're eating lots of very satiating foods like watermelons and, and lots of tons of veggies, which veggies are good. I'm not saying don't eat veggies, but if you're eating tons of them and you're not including those low satiating foods and you're trying to gain weight, you're going to have a problem gaining weight. So again, I would definitely focus on satiety. That is one of, again, the best ones that I can give you if your goal is to gain or lose weight up. If you implement that tip, I'm telling you, that's probably, I wouldn't say it's better than my previous tip, but I, 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 if I had to pick one tip for you guys to follow for nutrition, I would definitely follow that one. So there you have you guys. Those are my tips for nutrition and for training. Um, for those of you who are coming into New Year's 2020 and you're looking for these goals, I'm telling you, if you apply these tips, you are you are going to see results. If you guys have any questions or comments about these tips, anything you want me to cover in future videos, please comment down below. Give this video a like. Share it with a friend who has a New Year's goal, you know, and they they they've been struggling to achieve that. But thank you guys again for watching. I'll see you guys in my next video. Peace.